What is up guys, it is Joe here from Joe Talks Wrestling and we are talking AEW, All Elite Wrestling, Fighter Fest. What a pay-per-view. It completely stomps on stomping grounds. Like, it doesn't hold a candle to it. I mean, I don't even think it's right that we compare WWE and AEW anymore because they are so different. AEW is so, like a, a pure wrestling show, whereas WWE is the entertainment show. Um, and obviously you're not saying WWE has bad wrestlers, not in the slightest. Um, but right now, I mean, AEW is the one to watch. Um, WWE really needs to start cleaning up the game a little bit. Uh, we all know that ratings are poor, attendance is poor. Um, and yeah, so Fighter Fest. The buy in was amazing. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed the tag match. I thought that was great. We had a triple threat tag team match, was fantastic. Um, and Private Party have got a fan in me. Uh, that was great. I really enjoyed them. Um, they were really showcased. Obviously, they were the um, like least known team in that match. So they were showcased quite well. Uh, they didn't win, but they did have a good, like, run. Um, then I actually missed the next part of the, like, the buy-in, because my Wi-Fi went down, which was annoying. Uh, but it was, like, the librarian match, um, which I sort of caught up on on highlights. And that looks okay, I guess, as well. Um, and then, yeah, the buy-in was, all overall, was great. Then, moving on to the main show... Fantastic. My top three matches were the Lucha Brothers and Laredo Kid versus the Elite, Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks. Um, then I also was a fan of Cody versus Darby Allen. I thought that was great. I mean, I feel like Darby should have had more uh, like offense in. Uh, the match was mainly, obviously walking in, it was Darby Allen was this sick freak uh, who even had a body bag with Cody's name written on it. But when the actual match came, he just got his ass handed to him. Um, he took some nasty bumps as well. Like I was watching it cringing. Uh, he got thrown straight through the second turnbuckle in the corner. And he like spun out, landed back first on the ground. Looked nasty. And the worst one. Uh, probably a candidate up there for one of the worst bumps of the night. Obviously not including the, uh, the whole Joey Janela, John Moxley match. Um, but he sort of done a trust fall, Kofi style. He, uh, Cody was laid out on the apron. And uh, he sort of stood there, crossed his arms and jumped backwards. And he landed half and half on the apron. Like, it was like, oh, it was hard to watch. My reactions on this channel, go check it out. But, oh my God, they had a pretty good match. Um, he tried to recover from it. Couldn't. Uh, Cody hit a disaster kick, putting him in the body bag, which was quite entertaining. Then hit the crossroad for the win. And then out of nowhere, bang, Sean Spears, FKA, Ty Dillinger. Um, the perfect 10 hit a chair shot over the head of Cody. These two were meant to be friends. Uh, Sean Spears turning heel on Cody Rhodes. MJF running out. Um, people trying to look after Cody, like, you know, make sure he's okay. He did bleed, I believe. Uh, he was bleeding on the back of his head. Um, but yeah, Sean Spears, heel turn, unexpected. So that was a, always a plus. Uh, heel turns are always cool to see. Um, next up, we had the women's triple threat. Um, and, uh, well, that was before this match, but I should have I should have talked about it before, realistically, shouldn't I? But never mind, we're talking about it now. Quite entertaining. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, I can't remember the names right now. I was watching the Clips live stream, and uh, we were just referring to her as Aladdin, the one with the, uh, the puffy trousers. But, yeah, I was entertained by that. There was a beautiful knee. Um, the, the bigger one, I can't remember her name, the, the monster woman. Uh, she like was on the top rope and hit a diving knee um, on someone that was like on the ropes and oh my god it she sold it perfectly it was great so that match was all was nice and entertaining it did go on a fair bit but um, obviously what can you expect um, the women really wanted to be showcased as that was like the only women's match on the card so they did have to have some time and it was entertaining I'm glad they did go as long as they did maybe five minutes shorter wouldn't have hurt but at the same time it was a good match. Next up, we're talking about the Lucha Brothers versus Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks, the Elite. 
Um, also had Laredo Kid on their side. They came out in Street, fight, in, uh, street Fighter inspired gear, which was awesome. Uh, Kenny with his red dyed hair. Um, and we had Matt Jackson wearing like a white, like, um, like Street Fighter like attire. And then Nick wearing the same gear, but red. Uh, that was awesome. And this match, oh my God, if you thought the Lucha Brothers versus the Young Bucks at Double or Nothing was great, you've got to check this out. It was fantastic. Um, it's my longest reaction video because normally with my reaction videos, I tend to do stop, start, stop, start uh, when big things happen. This match was a spot fest from the opening bell. Um, I didn't want to miss anything. We had dives to the outside. We had pile drivers. Um, we had super kick parties. It's one to check out. Um, I can't wait to watch it again. And I was just blown away. It was amazing. But in the end, Kenny Omega picking up the victory for the team, which was fantastic. And at the end of the match, uh, everyone recovered. They had a big stare down. I thought they were going to shake hands, but no, they're still rivals. Uh, remember, Pentagon and Kenny had their match at All In. So... Hopefully, we'll see more because them are uh, there. That match ain't gonna get tired for me. I mean, I every time I see the Young Bucks versus the Lucha Brothers or Kenny versus Pentagon, I can't wait for the match because I know it's gonna be fantastic. But moving on to the actual main event that they weren't saying was the main event, they were booking this unsanctioned matches. Right, the AEW show's over now. Once we put the lights down, the official AEW show's over, but we've got one more match. But when it's so they couldn't be held liable in kayfabe terms if anything bad happened. And it was John Moxley versus Joey Janela. Um, Moxley coming out in his traditional cargo pants. I believe that's his AEW look. Obviously, we've got him in New Japan now where he wears his trunks. You can't really get away with wearing jeans and like cargo trousers in New Japan though. You have to sort of wear gear. He's the current reigning defending IWGP United States Champion. Did not carry the belt to the ring. I don't believe that uh, New Japan and AEW have a deal where they can do that. So I know that they can use the same talent. But I don't think New Japan really want their belts being shown now on AEW TV. And wow, this match. Um, everyone talks about... How Moxley's PG nowadays. He's not that hungry teen anymore. He just proved that wrong. We had a barbed wire steel chair. We had barbed wire boards. Um, and oh my god, we had thumbtacks. And that was the most dirty spot of the night. Uh, the match was great. There was table spots. There was a straight from the opening bell. Um, one of my favourite spots of the match was Joey Janela was thrown onto the steel chair that was set up like in the chair position like just sitting like a normal chair thrown straight into it the chair collapses under his weight it looked brutal but we cannot take away from the ending whoa i mean moxie took off joey janela's shoes and socks picks him up in like an atomic drop position and just plonks him down on the thumbtacks janela back bumps off it he looked the camera pans to his feet in his heels are just thumbtacks it looks so painful um, and I was sitting there cringing at how painful it looked. Picked him up. We did see a Dirty Deeds, but they're not calling it that. They're just calling it Double Underhook DDT. And then Moxie finishes it off. Picks him up. Death Rider, his new finish. The one that won in the IWGP title. Uh, United States title, sorry. One, two, three. Moxie wins. End of show? No. Kenny Omega comes out and jumps John Moxie. Getting his revenge for Double or Nothing. Hitting him with a, a bin. Um, and then just to add insult to injury really, hits the double underhook DDT, Dirty Deeds on the bin at the top of the stage. Kenny walks away, the camera pans to Moxie's face. The sick bastard is smiling and oh my God, it's just amazing. I can't wait for the next AEW show. I'm giving this show a big fat eight out of 10 because I thought realistically it was fantastic. Um, there are stars being built, which is great to see. Uh, obviously, they need that. They're not relying on their big stars. Um, loads of matches which I haven't spoke about that I enjoyed. For example, the uh, the Fatal 4-Way, Jimmy Havoc versus Jungle Boy versus Hangman Page versus uh, MJF. So that, obviously, there is matches I haven't spoke about in detail. But I'm just giving you, for my review, I'm giving you the matches that I love the most. So I do hope you agree with my review. If you don't tell me, if you do tell me, uh, what did you think of AEW uh, Fighter Fest? I mean, I thought it was amazing, but I want to hear your guys' opinion. So be sure to give this video a like, comment, and subscribe. I've been Joe from Joe Talks Wrestling. You guys have been awesome. Stay tuned for more wrestling content, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.